separate, not combine, government and business. And the environment is the overlying issue here. But for them, the environment means nature before man. This is a piece of land in Santa Cruz County that my wife and I bought in 1985. And this particular day was uh, in May of 1986. I remember it well because that was the day we got married there. Now it looked nice to us, it had beautiful topography, great ocean views, half of it was uh, uh, grasslands, the other half was impenetrable walls of poison oak as much as 40 feet high. But we still liked it, it was exciting for us. You couldn't walk, even though this is still in the springtime, you couldn't walk through these pasture grasses uh, without plastic pants because uh, they'd, uh, you'd get stuck uh, with, with the uh, thistles and the burrs. But we spent uh, the next uh, 17 years slow process of what we called seed bank management to transform this landscape and, and hopefully create something that we would consider glorious. Well, slowly, 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 like the Liberty Movement itself, we began to replace these plants by controlling the seeds that fell. And occasionally we'd see some unique plant that we'd get identified as a native plant and we'd nurture that plant along. And so in April of 2003, I'm going to take a, a, a view of what I've circled here. In April of 2003, that landscape looked like this. All native indigenous plants. In this section, hardly a weed there. The landscape was transformed by rigorous human disturbance, violating every concept of sustainable development land management. You see, people can achieve things working in their own interests and working cooperatively with others. Those are the ideals that are American. The precautionary principle which runs the sustainable development environmental policy is a fraud. It holds that people are a cancer upon the earth and that if people undertake any action, it must, they say, cause no harm. So in other words, if you were to walk out on a landscape during the mating season of the red-legged frog, you'd have to demonstrate, in order not to, to violate sustainable development rules, that you didn't harm a frog that might have been out there. It turns the concept of justice on its head. Guilt is presumed and innocent must be proven. That is the legal dynamic of sustainable development. And in California, we now have what's called the Keeley. He's a Santa Cruz legislature, legislator, environmental crimes bill. And we have 400 prosecutors roaming the state looking for environmental crimes, not gross polluters. I don't know any gross polluters. Our air has gotten awfully clean over the last 25 years. They're looking for people who are violating biodiversity rules, like walking on your own property after you've signed up on a best management practice program with the federal government when you shouldn't have been. You see at the root of the environmental movement is a program to implement a political philosophy. It relies on deception, junk science, and poor stewardship. It answers the question, who decides? With the response, not you. It destroys the potential of a free society through regulations so that it can collectivize land. It invites dirty politics. And nowhere did that become more evident than with the administration of Gray Davis. It is very expensive. California and the United States are falling into a hole not just because of our military adventures, but sustainable development is costing us a ton. We are spending America into bankruptcy in order to steal America from Americans. Remember, support the repeal of the Endangered Species Act. Now, I described my, my experience with the local Agenda 21. I don't want anyone to think that those hard efforts didn't go unnoticed by important people in important places. Here's a letter from the Congress of the United States and our local representative, a man named Sam Farr, who's Leon Panetta's successor in Congress uh, on the central coast of California. And this letter was written to the Agenda 21 Committee, where Congressman Farr writes, 
I am writing to congratulate you, the Advisory Board and Action Santa Cruz Coalition, for completing the local Agenda 21 action plan. He goes on to say, I support the principle of sustainable development to balance the needs of, number one, ec economic growth, number two, environmental stewardship, and number three, social equity. I'm spearheading a similar effort to develop the planning process for sustainable development for the entire Monterey Bay region. But finally, and occasionally, Congressman Farr says something that's honest. The local Agenda 21 action plan not only has local significance, it will also have regional and national impacts. So why does Sam Farr say he's never heard of Agenda 21? Yes, Congressman Farr. I'd, I'd like your comment. My name's Daniel Beckett. I'd like your comments on the, uh, on the uh, United Nations Agenda 21 program that you're implementing here. Could you tell us a little bit about that? I have no idea what you're talking about. But you endorsed it, sir. I have your, your paperwork. Welcome to the halls of Congress. Has deceit become the norm? Congressman Farr is the first congressman in our national elected assembly to, in his hallway, display the flag of the United Nations. But he's not the only one. Mr. Farr is a Democrat. Our Republican president said about six weeks ago in addressing the United Nations, Quote, the United States of America is committed to the United Nations. The founding documents of the United Nations and the founding documents of America stand in the same tradition. Well, it's going to have to be the American people who begin to educate the American president about the nature of political philosophy. You see, the, the issue with elected officials is this. Are you a political internationalist or are you an American constitutionalist? There are two spirits within our Congress right now and it is time to turn the bright lights on the political internationalists. Fortunately, support for Congressman Ron Paul's H.R. 1146, which calls for the withdrawal from the United Nations, is growing within Congress and we need to encourage that process to continue. You see, Resurrecting the American political system requires a Congress that does its job, that knows what Article I, Section 8 is all about when it comes to limiting the scope of their power. So what can we do? Well, we can hold our local officials, whether they're to Congress or to the City Council, accountable to the American constitutional system of government that is being undermined by a consensus process with predetermined outcomes. And I'd say, that America needs a new Congress if America is going to remain the land of the free let's show ourselves to be the home of the brave you can also participate by investigating researching writing and speaking out in your own community because every agenda 21 program remember it's global local that's their language is infiltrated into our local levels. It's being implemented by people largely who don't know what they're doing or what it's all about. But our exposure can help reverse that tide. Support freedom advocacy groups and spread the spirit of liberty. Well, another question has to be asked and answered, and that is this. How is it that they are changing government? Is our government, as Al Gore said, being reinvented? You might remember his program called the Reinvention of Government that he talked about in the mid-90s. Well, there was some substance behind that silly talk, and I'm going to describe that by taking us on a quick ride. But first, we have to define a term, and that term is Soviet. Most Americans don't know what it means. It's just a nasty